Cedric Beasley wrote in and asked me would I look at recording dialogue, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to look at the tools you need and the techniques you can employ to get you recording dialogue. We'll be looking at mic techniques and a couple of simple tricks that can make your recordings perfecto. Dialogue is the most important recording that you'll be doing. The dialogue communicates the story or the message and is the number one element of any production. If you don't get it right on the day, the work that it takes to iron out any problems is costly and it eats into production schedule. We need to look at mics. There are two main types of mics for recording dialogue, a lavier and a shotgun. The lav is for concealing on the body so it can't be seen and is connected to a recorder by a cable or more commonly a wireless system. A wireless system is a radio transmitter where the mic is plugged into and the receiver where the signal of the mic is recorded. Of course, a cable is much safer than the wireless system but the wireless system gives the presenter actor far more freedom and range to move around. In the industry, they're also known as a clip mic or a body mic, a collar mic, a neck mic, even a personal mic. Another type of mic that is generally used for recording is a shotgun like this. They can be called a boom mic as well because it's held in position by a boom pole. And a boom pole is a long pole that's held in position near the person delivering the dialogue, but out of the frame. Shotgun mics have a really directional pickup pattern, so it can be used from a distance. With the shotgun, you have the advantage of being able to use a much higher quality mic. Labs and shotguns are used in conjunction with each other, and each mic signal is recorded on a separate track on the recorder. They're recorded in pairs, so each person delivering is allocated two tracks, say one and two, or three and four, for their lav and their shotgun. The labs are connected to the mixer or recorder via radio transmitter and receiver in most cases. There's lots of types or brands of radio packs from Rode, Sennheiser or Sony. All great systems. They kind of sound different and there's a huge price range as well. The labs are concealed on the person delivering the lines either in the clothes or on the body, even in the hairline of a wig. When miking your subject, be mindful of the wind, clothes rubbing off the mic and anything pulling out of the wire in the midst of the action. I like to be super secure and use some tape to help conceal the lav like this. It helps reduce clothes rubbing off the mic. It also conceals the mic from the wind. Booming is a method of bringing the mic closer to the actors or presenter without getting the mic in shot. There's a couple of ways of approaching booming overhead or underneath. If there's movement in the scene, then the overhead allows you to follow the actors easily with the mic. The disadvantage is you can get more of the room's reverb and ambience on the recordings. So with TV presenters and scenes with little movement, I generally boom from underneath. It cuts out a lot of the ambient noise around you and brings more presence onto the recordings, which is nice. An exceptionally important thing to do while you're recording, apart from miking correctly, keeping an eye on your levels, watching your power on all devices, checking your storage, ensuring that you have everything backed up, <laughs> is to take written notes of what you're recording. Know what mics are going where and who's being recorded on each mic. Take notes on what dialogue is being recorded and what the dialogue's best takes are. And It's of huge advantage to the dialogue editor when they receive your notes. One of the most important aspects of recording dialogue is to make sure that there's a sync point on the audio and the video. In the olden days, clapperboards were used. If you don't have one of them, then the simplest method is to use clapping your hands while your picture and sound is running. You can then match up the waveform of the clap in your audio to where you do your clap on the picture. It'll save you hours of post-syncing the picture and audio later, especially if you've a lot of footage to post-sync. And lastly, before anyone goes home, record your wild track, which is known as Atmos. This is a recording of the sound of the location when no one's talking. Before anyone takes off a mic, you need to record a couple of minutes of air in the room or in the location. It's essential for the dialogue edit and should be standard practice on every shoot you're involved in. If the producer or the director suggests that you don't have time, explain to them in simple language that it's of utmost importance to the project and will only take two minutes. Failing that, use the term STFU, whichever is the most effective to get the task done. 
always worth remembering. If there's a problem with uh, any of the recordings on the day, then you could do a process called ADR or... Automatic Dialogue Replacement. ...in the studio after the shoot. We did a show on ADR, and you'll find the link below. I'll be doing a dialogue edit in the next show, showing you some tricks on how to edit dialogue to a world-class level. I'm Keith Alexander, you've been watching Adorama TV. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos and tell us what you think. You can like, you can comment, or you can share this video. And please come by the Adorama Learning Centre for more great tips and tricks.